Hey, this is Sharon with simplycanning.com. We are in the process of making jerky today. We are using um, venison. It's ground venison. Did we miss, mix any pork with this? This is just straight venison. Yeah, this is just straight venison. We're using a mix today. It's the jerky cure and seasoning mix. We got this from... Do you remember where we got this? Just the grocery store. Just the grocery store. Okay. <coughs> Anyway, the recipe actually calls for, um, if you use one of these mixes, the recipes usually call for adding water. This one called for adding water to your mix. We have tried it both ways, both adding water and not adding water, and it works better if you don't add the water because it just seems to dry faster, obviously, because there's less water in it. These are the racks for my Cabela's dehydrator, and we're getting ready to spread the jerky on there. My husband is prepping the meat right now. What we do is we mix the seasoning mix in it really well, and then we leave it in a large bowl. We have one of those metal bowls there, covered with saran wrap, and we put that in the fridge and leave it sit at least overnight. I believe this sat for two nights, three nights, because just because we were busy. And then we are going to use a jerky shooter, which we really, really like. Ladies, if you need a gift for your husband, this is a great gift. Um, but it works really well to lay out the jerky in strips. And it could be that's why it works really well to not add the water. But this is a jerky blaster. Let me show you the box here. We actually got this a couple of years ago, and we've used it quite a bit. And we really like it. But what we're doing is we, put, we roll the meat up in just two little balls, like you're going to make hamburgers, but they're, just, they're not flat, they're round. And then it makes it really easy to pop them into the jerky master or the jerky blaster um, because they're the right size. And what happens is we have them all the right size. And then, of course, as you're doing this, your hands get all grimy. So you can go ahead and wash your hands while you're handling the jerky blaster, and it makes less mess. And I am all for less mess. Okay, you can see where how we just pick up those balls, meatballs, and pop them in the jerky shooter. Keep pressing them down in. You can see it makes nice strips. It's really easy to pump out. This is the big shooter, um, and it works really well. It's pretty strong, and that's probably why it works when we don't add the water like the directions on the package say. So if you don't have a big shooter like that, um, be sure and try it first before you do a whole batch and skip the water because it might make a difference. And we've also made jerky using um, our own seasonings, just some different recipes. And what my husband likes to do is mix it up and then just take, take a patty of it and put it in the frying pan and fry it up and see what it tastes like. And that's a good way to check for your own recipes. And the jerky should actually, the meat patty that you've cooked should actually be a little bit not as salty as what you would want for jerky because it does get saltier as it dries. But that's just a little tip if you're not using a mix. Now we've had really good luck with this mix as far as flavor. We've tried some others where um, the mix just, there's hardly any flavor for it and you end up like doubling or tripling the amount of seasonings you put in the recipe and it just 
it tastes like plain meat. So we don't care for that. But this brand we've had good luck with. And if you lay those strips just right, they don't stick to the tray too bad because you're going to want to dry them for a while and then you flip them over so that they don't stick to your tray. Okay, we're at the very last of our meat here end of the batch and we have a trick we're going to show you or a tip on how to get the very last of the meat out of the tip I don't know what you call that the tip I guess of the, the tricky shooter because what happens is you get a big blob of meat in the end that won't come out so what we do is we sacrifice some bread. This is my homemade wheat bread. So this is a major sacrifice. So that fills up in the tip here. Actually there was a it won't can't push any further, so might as well use that mixed meat up. Then you take the bread. Take some bread. Just like you were like it was the meat. And that bread gets pushed through and pushes the meat out. And you get a couple of extra pieces of jerky. Is that it? Just mention how the meat is more expensive than those two pieces of bread. Well, you just heard it. You just heard it from the man. It was homemade bread, so that's. <laughs> Be very, very careful. Talking about my homemade bread. Well, yeah, that's more. Cheap There's the bread plug. If you can have a little bit of this, but it'd be even better if you have cheapo. I'm just joking. What we call air bread from the store. But okay, so that's the last little batch. So we got a half a rack there, not even a half a rack. And then we ended up with how many racks? Four racks? Four. Okay, four racks here. We'll carry them down to the dehydrator. Here we go. We're putting it into our dehydrator here. And we just evenly space out the racks because there's not going to be, we didn't fill all of the racks for the whole dehydrator. Mm. What are you setting it for? 160 at two hours. You set it for 160 for two hours. Then we'll come check it and probably flip it over, maybe move some racks around. I think we usually just flip it and then I believe we lower the temperature at that point. Do you lower the temperature? Or no? No, I guess we leave it at 160 and you just keep watching it, check it every couple of hours until it is dry. You don't want it to be crispy, it should be slightly bendy, but, but dry. They're laughing at me. They don't know what bendy is. I'll show you when we're when the batch is all done. We'll get we'll do another little segment here with the, the final batch. <laughs> okay, we're just finishing up 
um, ran out our jerky, and we thought we'd show you how an easy way to clean your counters is to use a little scraper tool, and it scrapes up all those little pieces of meat. Because you know how when you use a rag and they all just kind of roll up, it doesn't work very well. Well, this is a great way to do it. Actually works better when it's dried on there just a little bit. Yeah, this is all still pretty wet. And if it's drier, it actually scrapes up even better. And then that goes to the chickens. Because they like every little last drop. And then, of course, you wash the counters off. And that wasn't a very big mess. Sometimes it's a huge mess. Okay, I wanted to show you what the jerky looks like when we take it out. Um, these are all half pieces. We've taken it out of the dehydrator. I just break them in half. But since they were laughing at my terminology of bendy, I wanted to explain what that means. Basically, you want the jerky to be dry. Most, um, all the moisture is taken out, but it's not crispy. It's not cooked hard. You can see it's bendy. It's going to break when you when you bend it too far. But um, that's what I mean by bendy. It's not so crispy that you can't keep it. That you can't bend it a little bit in your hands. Um, this is my little jerky container here. It's actually a bread Tupperware thing, but it works great for jerky. We just keep it all in there and keep it in the fridge, and then the boys all snack on it whenever they like. And it doesn't last real long. Um, Anyway, that is how we make our jerky, and I hope it's been helpful. Visit my site at simplycanning.com. You have a great day. No, no, no.